G'day. Welcome to Emergency Medicine Topics in One Coffee. I'm Alan Giles, I'm an emergency physician, and today's topic is paediatric intersusception. Now it's a bit of a cop-out really, because children don't present to the emergency department with, on their forehead, I've got intersusception. Instead, they're part of that large group of children that present to EDs with abdominal pain and vomiting. And it's the art of clinical medicine to be able to get an appropriate history and examination uh, to make the diagnosis or suspect the diagnosis, get your initial treatment started, get the investigations done, and then get to your definitive treatment. So what, first of all, is intersusception? Well, it's the telescoping of one segment of bowel, the intersusceptum, into a more distal segment, the intersuscepiens. Usually this is the terminal ileum telescoping into the cecum. Proximally, the small bowel dilates behind this obstruction. Now this most commonly occurs between the ages of about 3 to 12 months. It's pretty rare before 3 months and it really drops away after about 36 months. Uh, but it can still occur. In fact, in under six-year-olds, it's the most common cause of bowel obstruction. Now, most of the time, the cause is actually unknown, especially in those under 12 months. But sometimes, especially in the older children, you can find that it was a lead point that has pulled one part of the bowel into the other. Classics of these would be a Peyer's patch following uh, an infection or maybe a Meckel's diverticulum. Okay, so how does the child with intersusception present to the emergency department? Well, severe colicky abdominal pain. And the colicky abdominal pain is such that they may often draw their legs up, uh, become listless and pale during these episodes. The parents may initially think, well, the child's got constipation, but they come to the emergency department because usually the severity of the pain and the fact that the episodes just don't go away. Uh, the child, as we said earlier, could be vomiting, it's very common, but bilious vomiting would be late. Uh, you ask about the bowels, and diarrhoea is quite common. There is that characteristic red currant jelly stool, but that's a pretty late sign, and because when you think about it, where does it come from? It's because your mucosa has become necrotic and sloughed off. So you can suspect it, from the story. Um, I like to think of the word intersusception has got in the middle of it sus, like suspect. I find it useful. Remember that you've got to also think about all those other differential diagnoses that could be in there. I mean, there's other causes of bowel obstruction. You could have enteritis. You could have a urinary tract infection. Make sure uh, that you consider the genitals, look at testes, and also non-accidental injury. They're all in the mix, but you do have to suspect intersusception when the, the history sort of directs you that way. So are there things on the physical examination that can help us? Well, there may be. If you're gentle and you're lucky, you may be able to feel a sausage-shaped mass most commonly around the right upper quadrant. Uh, the child's abdomen may be a bit distended because of developing small bowel obstruction and as such it may have decreased bowel sounds. Um, do a good general examination because the child is quite often um, dehydrated and you've got to make sure you check for the hernial orifices and the testes in boys. Would I do a rectal examination? If I clinically suspected a um, intersusception, I actually would. Um, I'd use my little finger and I'd be feeling for a mass or to see if there's any uh, blood or mucus on my finger um, on that PR. So what do you do? Well, you organise your investigations and you start your treatment at the same time. Uh, put an intravenous line in and draw bloods obviously for a glucose for a full blood count and some electrolytes. And I would give an intravenous fluid bolus to most of these children of, well, let's at least start at 10 mils per kilo of uh, normal saline. They'll need some intravenous narcotic. Mm, I would use morphine, 0.05 milligrams per kilogram IV. 
And at this stage, where I was organising investigations and getting that treatment started, um, I would speak to the paediatric team to get them involved nice and early. So what imaging should you do? Well, most emergency departments would actually do a plain abdominal x-ray. And this can show signs consistent with interception, such as a target sign or a crescent sign. And if they're perforated, you may see free air. The problem is, of course, that the abdominal x-ray may in fact be misleading because it may be normal. In reality, if you are truly suspicious but not certain of interception, ultrasound is more appropriate, it's more sensitive. And there are some characteristic findings you may see on ultrasound such as this. Okay, so what's the definitive treatment? Well, if you've got signs of perforation, then the child needs to emergently go to the operating theatre. For most other children, however, they'll try and get reduction of the intersusception with an air enema. Now, an air enema is most successful where the underlying cause is idiopathic, and this tends to be in the younger age group, sort of under 12 months. It certainly can be successful in all paediatric age groups, but a little bit less successful um, as you're going um, to an older child that might have a lead point like that Meckel's diverticulum. The following example of an air enema I've taken from Dr. Larry Millick's excellent video where he follows a child who has intersusception and this is the air enema reduction. Now you can see on there there's a URL. If you want to copy and paste that, you can see his entire presentation. However, not all hospitals are able to do paediatric reduction with air enema. If you're working in a small emergency department and you have a child that has an intersusception or suspected intersusception and needs to be transferred to a paediatric centre or a large um, hospital that's got that service, it's probably not a bad idea to give a shot of intravenous kefazolin and intravenous metronidazole um, before the transfer. Okay, so. In summary, paediatric interception most commonly occurs in that sort of 3 to 12 month uh, age group but can certainly occur up to you know, 6 years of age um, but it's less common after 36 months. It has that characteristic pulling up the leg, severe colic abdominal pain. Uh, you may be able to have some help with your examination by feeling a mass or having a small bowel obstruction or even um, doing a rectal examination that shows, um, feels a mass or has some blood on the, on the finger. Um, make sure that you resuscitate the child appropriately. Um, if possible, get an ultrasound early rather than wasting too much time on a plain abdominal x-ray. And involve the paediatric team early so that the definitive reduction can occur um, in a timely sort of speed so that the child has the best opportunity for a good outcome. I reckon that'll just about do for paediatric interception in one coffee. Remember, be suspicious of intersusception. Cheers. I'll see you next time.